Hello and welcome back for day 325. Today we will be reading from Hosea, chapters 11 and 12, the apocryphal book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, and James, chapter 3. Hosea, chapter 11. When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. As they called them, so they went from them, they sacrificed unto Baalim, and burned incense to graven images. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms, but they knew not that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love, and I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. He shall not return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian shall be his king, because they refused to return. And the sword shall abide on his cities, and shall consume his branches, and devour them because of their own counsels. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me, my repentings are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. For I am God, not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion, when he shall roar. Then the children shall tremble from the west. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt, and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. Ephraim compasseth me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with his saints. Hosea chapter 12 Ephraim feedeth on wind, and followeth after the east wind. He daily increaseth lies and desolation, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength, he had power with God, yea, he had power over the angel, and prevailed. He wept, and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord, is his memorial. Therefore turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. He is a merchant, the balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. And Ephraim said, Yet I am become rich, I have found me out substance. In all my labors they shall find none iniquity, in me that were sin. And I that am the Lord thy God, from the land of Egypt, will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles, as in the days of the solemn feast. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and used similitudes, by the ministry of the prophets. Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity, they sacrifice bullocks in Gilgal, yea, their altars are as heaps in the furrows of the fields. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly, therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. The Apocryphal Book of Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 11 Wisdom lifteth up the head of him that is of low degree, and maketh him to sit among great men. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. The bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. Boast not of thy clothing and raiment, and exalt not thyself in the day of honor. For the works of the Lord are wonderful, and his works among men are hidden. Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of hath worn the crown. Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced, and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first, and then rebuke. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause, neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not, and sit not in judgment with sinners. My son, Meddle not with many matters, for if thou meddle much, thou shalt not be innocent. 
And if thou follow after, thou shalt not obtain, neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. There is one that laboreth, and taketh pains, and maketh haste, and is so much the more behind. Again, there is another that is slow, and hath need of help, wanting ability, and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looketh upon him for good, and set him up from his low estate, and lifted up his head from misery, so that many that saw it marveled at him. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners, and evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. The gift of the Lord remaineth with the godly, and his favor bringeth prosperity for ever. There is that waxeth rich by his weariness and pinching, and this his the portion of his reward, whereas he saith, I have found rest, and now will eat continually of my goods. And yet he knoweth not what time shall come upon him, and that he must leave those things to others, and die. Be steadfast in thy covenant, and be conversant therein, and wax old in thy work. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord, and abide in thy labor. For it is an easy thing, in the sight of the Lord, on the sudden, to make a poor man rich. The blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly, and suddenly he maketh his blessing flourish. Say not, What profit is there of my service, and what good things shall I have hereafter? Again, say not, I have enough, and possess many things, and what evil shall I have hereafter? In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction, and in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. For it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure, and in his end his deeds shall be discovered. Judge none blessed before his death, for a man shall be known in his children. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trains. Like as a partridge taken and kept in a cage, so is the heart of the proud, and like as a spy watcheth he for thy fall. For he lieth in wait, and he turneth good into evil, and in things worthy praise will lay blame upon thee. Of a spark of fire a heap of coals is kindled, and a sinful man layeth wait for blood. Take heed of a mischievous man, for he worketh wickedness, lest he bring upon thee a perpetual blot. Receive a stranger into thine house, and he will disturb thee, and turn thee out of thine own. James chapter 3 My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth! And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Do they fountains send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, 
but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. That concludes our reading for the day. May the Lord bless everyone listening with strength, health, and courage, today and always.